Okay, so welcome to this video. So I have started doing the example already. So we've got BeCl2. So to work out our valence electrons, so how many we're going to be distributing over the whole molecule when these atoms come together, we look at the valence electron for each of these individual atoms and we add them together. Now this one doesn't have a charge, so we don't need to think about adding any extras or taking extras away from the total value. So we've got beryllium. So beryllium has two valence electrons, okay? Um, and chlorine, being a halogen, has seven valence electrons. So we've got two chlorines, so it will be two multiplied by seven, which would give us 16 valence electrons in total. So subtracting my four for putting in my two chlorides that are bonded to that central beryllium, I will have 12 electrons left over. So then I fill up my outer atoms and then I do my central one last. So so I've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So I've got no electrons left over. So looking at the beryllium, it's got 2, 4. And the chlorines have 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. So the chlorines have reached their octet and beryllium has not. But that's fine because beryllium is one of our exceptions. So boron and beryllium can have fewer than 8 electrons. Remember from um, the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, they need to have uh, 8 electrons. So they need to have 8 Whereas anything from aluminium down can hold more than eight if it is that central atom that's in the center. So this would be the correct Lewis diagram for this one. So thinking about the shape on this one, you've got beryllium, which is in the middle. You've got two chlorines on either side and there's no lone pairs around that beryllium. So it would be a linear conformation. So a linear shape there. Now the polarity, you've got two chlorines that are the same. They're going to have equal pull on those shared electrons. So it'll be non-polar. And the hybridization of the central beryllium would be needed to make one, two single bonds. So it would be an SP. So when you're looking at the hybridization, you look at the atom and you think how many lone pairs or how many sigma bonds is it making? So for each one that it's making, it needs an orbital for it. So you start with your S, you've got your three Ps, and then you can bring in two Ds to get up to your, to your number that you need. So with this one, we've got one, two. So we start with our S and we just bring in one P to get two orbitals. And that would be the hybridized that's resulting from this complex coming together. So let's look at one more example. So let's look at SO4 2 minus. So the valence electrons for sulfur would be, would be six, and oxygen would also be six because it's in the same column. So we've got four of those. And then we've got this two minus, so we need to add two electrons. So we've got six for our sulfur, we've got four lots of six for the oxygen, and we've got the two electrons the two minus. So that's five times six plus two. So that's 32 electrons. So starting off with sulfur, which is our central one, and putting in our four oxygens, and then we've got a two minus overall. So in doing this, I put in two, four, six, eight. Subtract that from my total, it's been 24 electrons. So starting from my outside atoms and working my way to the center, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that gives me 24 electrons. So I've used up all of my valence electrons. So this is the structure that I end up with. So I've got sulfur in the middle and I've got four oxygens. Now sulfur has its two, four, six, eight, and each of these oxygens also have the eight required. Now, not looking at formal charge, this is where you would end up with this structure. 
So the charge on this means that this would be water soluble because it's an ionic compound. So it would by default be considered polar. So it'd be water soluble. Now, looking at the shape here, I've got a central sulfur and four bonding atoms to that one. So it would be the tetrahedral, tetrahedral shape. And the hybridization here, I've got a sulfur that's got one, two, three, four sigma bonds. So I would have one S and three P's to get my four different orbitals. So I've got one and then three giving me four. So it'd be an SP3 hybridized um, sulfur. So the orbitals produced from that sulfur. So that one's a nice easy example there. So it's giving you an idea of what you need to do if you have a charge on it. Thank you.